uh, a very good morning to all of you. We will be starting the new topic uh, of the office from uh, this time. And, uh, and we will be starting the new topic of the office from this time. And uh, today is a lecture of the anatomy, so please bear with me. And from the next time, we will study about the pathology of the orbit. So, orbital anatomy. Today, we will be discussing the development of the orbit, the bony orbit, its dimensions, walls, margins, the orbital apex, the parts of the orbital apex, the optic canal, the superior orbital fissure, and the inferior orbital fissure, and the orbital contents. So, the next one the development of the orbit the orbit the orbit is a quadrilateral structure which develops around the eyeball which develops around the eyeball the orbital bones are formed at the second to the third month of the gestation the orbital uh, walls are formed from the neural crest cells these neural crest cells which form the frontonasal processes the frontonasal processes and the maxillary processes around the eyeball the orbital roof is formed from the mesodermal capsule of the forebrain. The floor and the lateral wall of the orbit is formed from the maxillary processes embryologically. The medial wall is formed in front from the frontonasal processes, in front from the frontonasal processes and behind by the pre and the orbitosphenoid processes. Until four weeks of gestation, the optical axis of the two orbits. Until four weeks of gestation, the optical axis of the two orbits form 180 degree. That is, they face directly opposite to each other, and this decreases to 72 degree. This decreases to 72 degree at the second month of gestation and 45 degree at birth. That is the adult. Uh, the adult 45 degree between the two orbits, uh, orbit optical axis is achieved at birth. So, uh, we can remember uh, from the histolo histology classes that the mesenchymal stem cells either differentiate into the chondroblast or the osteoblast. If the chondroblast later change into the bone, that, that is known as an endochondral bone formation. If the osteoblasts form the bone, it is known as intramembranous bone formation. The bones of the orbit differentiate during the third month and later undergo ossification. The frontal, zygomectic, maxillary and the palatine bones are, have the intramembranous origin while the siphonoid bone has both the endochondral and the intramembranous origin. The eyeball the reaches the adult side by 3 years of age but the orbit undergoes considerable alterations in size and shape and grows progressively till the puberty. This is the change in the orbit we see with the age. First, the, uh, according to the shape, it is oval in shape at, uh, in the fetus, fetus life. It is round when the, in the newborn and then it uh, achieves a quadrilateral shape at 7 years. The height and the width both increase, but they increase at a different pace at the different ages. If it uh, if it increases symmetri symmetrically, the orbital index wouldn't be. See, this orbital index is height upon width into hundred. So it achieves a uh, orbital index of hundred percent at the newborn age. While, but but it again decreases. The orbital index again decreases. That is. It, we mean to say that the width, uh, width grows more than the height and it is again increases that is the height increases more than the width at the red age. So there is a variation. Orbit size has to increase but there is a variation in the height and the width. The growth rate is different for the height and the width. So it is not a symmetrical growth of the orbit. That's why the shape changes. Okay. The clinical significance of this is the clefting syndrome. When the frontonasal processes and the maxillary processes don't fuse with each other, there is a cleft, cleft, and a, a cleft. Uh, there will be cleft there, and it is known as a clefting syndrome. That is, there is a failure of fusion of the neural crest wave cells. Uh, then the dermoid cyst. The location of the dermoid cyst is due to the sequestration of the ectoderm into the area of the neural crest cells fusion. The neuroclast cells have been believed to be originate from the mesoderm. That's why ectoderm into the mesoderm is known as a dermoid cyst. And because of the uh, this sequestration of the surface ectoderm, 
In the Franco-Zygomatic and the Franco-Ethmoidal suture, there is a specific location of these dermoid cysts. Okay. Next, the, the orbits are the quadrangular, quadrangular truncated pyramid bounded superiorly by the interior cranial fossa, medially by the nasal cavity and the ethmoidal ear sinuses, inferiorly by the maxillary sinuses and laterally by the middle cranial fossa and the temporal fossa. The dimensions of the orbit are the volume is 30 ml, the orbital rim is horizontally 40 mm and vertically 35 mm. The intraorbital width of the orbit is about 25 mm. The uh, depth, uh, that is, the interior posterior length of the orbit, that is, the medial wall from the interior to the posterior is 42 mm and the lateral wall from interior to posterior is 50 mm. The ratio of the volume of the orbit to the volume of the globe is 4.5 is to 1, that is the orbit is 4.5 times the volume of the globe. Next is the orbital index. The orbital index is the height of the orbit, is the height of the orbit divided by the width of the orbit in 200. The orbital index varies with different races and uh, has been seen as mega same. Mega Sime that is more than 89, it is seen in the Mongolians, Meso Sime 89 to 83 in Caucasians, Micro Sime less than 83 in the Negroes. That's why uh, in, this is helpful in the forensic department to analyze which race color it is. Each orbit is made up of 7 bones that is the frontal bone the frontal bone, the ethmoidal bone, the maxillary bone, the lacrimal bone, the zygomatic bone, the siphonoid bone and the palatine bone. Okay, this is the palatine, the butterfly bone, the horizontal portion, the perpendicular portion and the coronal section. The walls of the orbit can be divided because it is a quadrangular truncated shape of the orbit. The walls of the orbit can be divided into the medial wall, the lake. Uh, sorry, the medial wall, the lateral wall, the roof and the floor. The medial wall. Medial wall is formed. Well, this we have cut the sagittal section and we are seeing from inside the orbit. Uh, the medial wall is formed interior posteriorly by the frontal process of the maxilla, the lacrimal bone, the orbital plate of the ethmoid and the body of the siphonoid. Okay, the, this is the thinnest orbital wall. The medial wall, it is just 0.2 to 0.4 mm thick. It is uh, the two, the two medial walls are spaced 2.5 centimeters apart. That is the nasal cavity is about 2.5 centimeter wide. The two medial walls are parallel to each other and measure about 4.5 to 5 centimeter interior posteriorly. Majority of it is formed by the lamina papyracea. This is the look from when we see the medial wall from the nasal cavity and not from the orbital cavity, the lamina papyracea. We can easily see the uncinic process, perpendicular plate, ethmoidal cells and the crispa gallus. Landmarks in the medial wall, the lacrimal fossa. It forms the interior part of the medial wall. It is formed by the frontal process of the maxilla and the lacrimal bone and it contains the lacrimal sac. It is bound by the interior and the posterior lacrimal crests. So the lacrimal fossa is between the lacrimal fossa is between the interior lacrimal crest on the frontal process of the maxilla and the posterior lacrimal crest on the lacrimal bone. This is the orbital rim, the supraorbital notch on the orbital rim. So, the greater wing of the siphonoid, the greater wing of the siphonoid, the greater wing of the siphonoid forms the lateral wall, the lesser wing of the siphonoid forms the roof, and this is a frontal bone, this is a frontal bone, this is the superior orbital fissure, this is the optic canal, this is the zygoma bone, this is the maxilla, this is the intraorbital foramen. This is the intra, uh, uh, infraorbital groove. Okay. Medial to uh, medial to the lacrimal fossa, upper part 
has interior earth model and the lower part has the middle matrix of the nose. Just behind the posterior lacrimal crest, there is an attachment. Just behind the posterior lacrimal crest, this is the posterior lacrimal crest. Just behind it, there is an attachment of the hornous muscle, check ligaments of the medial rectus, and the septum orbital. And there are also present in the medial wall, the interior and the posterior ethmoidal foramen through which the interior and the posterior ethmoidal vessels enter into the nasal cavity from the orbit. The applied anatomy of the medial wall is it is the thinnest ethmoidal rectus, is the most common cause of the orbital cellulitis, especially in children, frequently eroded by the chronic inflammatory lesions, neoplasm, and cysts. This wall, the medial orbital wall is easily fractured during the trauma and during the orbitotomy operations. The hemorrhage can occur due to the trauma or to the ethmoidal vessels. The, there is, if there is an accidental lateral displacement of the medial wall, there will be that will result into the traumatic hypertelorism. The medial wall provides alternate access route to the orbit through the sinuses. The like in the this also helps in the DCR operation as the lacrimal bone can be easily penetrated through the endoscopic DCR. The floor of the orbit is formed by the maxillary bone. The floor of the orbit is formed by the maxillary bone medially and the zygomatic bone laterally. And this is we, uh, we are viewing the floor from the uh, from the this we are viewing the floor from the top uh, by entering the wall superiorly to inferiorly. Okay, and there is a small part of the palatine bone posteriorly. The floor is triangular in shape. You are seeing the floor, the triangular in shape. It is, uh, this is the infraorbital groove, inferior orbital fissure. Okay, this is triangular in shape. It slo slopes downwards and laterally towards the outside. It is the shortest orbital wall. It is bordered laterally by the inferior orbital fissure and medially by the maxilloethmoidal suture. This overlies the maxillary sinus. That is the blowout fractures you will see. Okay, this overlies the maxillary sinus. The landmarks in the floor are the infraorbital groove. It, this is the superior orbital fissure, inferior orbital fissure. This is the inferior orbital groove. The intraorbital canal, that is the uh, the intraorbital canal is between the infraorbital groove up to the infraorbital foramen. What is infraorbital foramen? It is located 4.5 mm inferior to the inferior orbital margin it transmits both the infraorbital nerve and the infraorbital vessels commonly the floor is involved in the blowout fractures of the orbit the infraorbital vessels and nerves almost always involved this is easily invaded by the tumors of the maxillary antrum diplopia is the main symptom of the blowout fracture in the floor fracture there is a double diplopia that is the diplopia is present in both up gaze and the down gaze and this occurs due to the entrapment of the inferior oblique and the inferior rectus muscles this is a head charting of the blowout fracture of the floor of the orbit and uh, there is a restriction due to the uh, blowout fracture of the right eye of the orbit the lateral wall it is a triangular uh, this view we are seeing from the orbit from inside towards the lateral side it is a triangular in shape perpendicular to each other formed by the two bones interiorly by the zygomatic bone and posteriorly by the greater wing of the siphonoid it separates the orbit from the middle cranial fossa and the temporal fossa and there is a out, uh, outgoing through the inferior orbital fissure to the temporal fossa. The anatomical landmarks, uh, we will study this in the second part of the today's lecture.